So we don't have much time. I would want to immediately call in the next speaker, Mrs. Wai um, Shoeto. So she will be discussing with us on the evolution of the classroom. We've heard um, what Evan told us right now about um, technology and digital citizenship. And from here in Nigeria, we've gone way back to now. So I'll call in Mrs. Wai Shoeto to speak on the topic, the evolution of the classroom in Nigeria. So let's welcome Mrs. Hello, everyone. So um, it's good to be here. And um, I'll just go right into it so that um, I don't take your time. And um, I would like to present my slides. Um, I would share now and see what happens if um, it's going to come up. Before you go on, Mark. Please yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you sure I, are you sure I have time? <laughs> okay, so... Break it. Please do that. Just okay, it. so my name is Uwaya Shueton. I'm an educator, soon to be a data analyst. And because I'm studying with IBM right now, I love everything human development and I believe that data science is the way to um, improve lives these days because there's big data everywhere and you know there's so much that we need to know if we can make sense of data and um, present them in um, meaningful ways to people then we would be able to predict how to help humanity and mankind and eventually improve people's lives especially through education so that's my calling. And so when I'm confident said I should do um, evolution of, um, what's it called? Evolution of technology in classroom. Yeah. I, I was actually excited because something I, I have a background in and I'm, a, and I'm passionate about because I have a school and um, I have worked with schools in, in the past. I, I also, um, was the convener of an association that organized a lot of trainings for people. So, yes, so that's me. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for that. You can please go ahead and share your screen with us. Okay. Okay, uh, can you see my, um, what's it called? My desktop? Yes, we can. You can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me try to put it in slide view. Okay, so um, evolution of technology in Nigerian schools. I graduated from the University of London um, six years ago, and one of my projects, or rather my uh, research project was on technology use in schools. And so I went around schools doing my research and um, I evaluated schools based on different criteria. I evaluated them based on um, resource available, knowledge and skills, general attitude and belief, kind of institution, curriculum and assessment. And in terms of um, the resource available, um, one minute, okay, okay, yeah. So in terms of the resource available, I, I noticed that schools that had a lot of resources had computer labs. They had well-equipped computer laboratories for um, children to study ICT. And then those that actually used ICT in other subjects, 
they merely presented them on the screen. So what they did with, for instance, mass was to present their um, teachings on um, a whiteboard or on a projector. So they did it at a very minimum level because I'm going to show you the three levels of computer use, how, where we are at now, where we need to be. And it's going to take three levels to get there. So um, the first, very first level is the presentation level. And that was where schools were at. And they, they, some of the teachers actually presented their notes on the board and then they tell children to, to write. But then that was a disservice to the children because it was more like helping the teachers to do their work and making it easy for the teachers and making it more difficult on the students because some teachers, imagine a teacher projecting a note and then going to sleep or going out and coming back to scream at the children. I used to write in this life, I need to change to the next life, you know, because she's not there to actually take her time to write it while the children write along. And it was a lot of, you know, catching up for the children to do. Some children didn't complete their notes. Some teachers decided to take it to a new level and they said, okay, we'll give you the whole of the textbook on the, on, um, send it to your mail, we'll send it online. And then you needed to form your notes. I remember children coming home with a lot of online, um, receiving a lot of text or a lot of notes online and having to form their notes from it. A lot of time children, students just cut and paste because, you know, I mean, it was, there was just so much and technology didn't seem to be making anything better for them. So this is the very basic, um, use of technology, which is the first level. And we can't fault these teachers, they didn't know. That's why we're here to, to learn what we're doing wrong, how we can improve on it. So that's why we have um, trainings like what we are on right now. So yes, then, um, and of course the schools that don't, didn't have enough resources, didn't have computer use at all. I remember being in working in a school and I was really, really very upset at the way they were using computer. They had like eight computers and they would pro announce to everybody that, oh, we, we, we have, we, we do computer, we do ICT and things. But guess what? When it was time for computer use, they would take children to the computer room and say, okay, touch the mouse, touch the mouse, move the mouse, move, and then, you, the children would be in a very long line waiting to use one computer and then it was just touch and go, touch and go. And, you know, it was, again, those are the um, very, very minimum level of using computers. So we need to graduate from there. Then um, the next thing is knowledge and skills. So I noticed that schools, that there are school leaders actually encourage computer use they went all out to learn computer i wasn't i also taught in a school where um it was very important to have computer use in your lesson plan if you didn't incorporate computer use in your lesson plan then you would be scored down or you'll be asked to do it again so in that kind of school you, they had a standard for using computer so that's not um, using computer at level one again, it's now moving to level two of computer use. So schools should be able to have a standard for which people use computer, even though at that school, they didn't detect the, the level of the standard, but at least they said the minimum is you must have computer use in your lesson plans. And then, even I, I remember I had to go all out then. And at some point I was to teach um, how chocolate was produced. I, I, I was lucky to get to search online from my research, get a simulation to show how this chocolate was produced in the factory so that the children experienced firsthand as if they were in the factory, what it was like to actually produce chocolate instead of actually talking at them over their heads about how this thing is being produced. So in my own school, what I do is I tell them, for instance, I give them a percentage. So I say in maths, we're going to do 50-50. 50% 50 worksheets, the other 
50% is hands-on. And what that means is that that has on part of, part of it is technology. So for instance, Excel has a lot of math formula. So if we've done 50% of practice on worksheet, then the other 50% we do practice on Excel. And that's what I recommend to schools. So that, you know, because when you go to, for instance, a company, I even was talking about, you know, when, when you eventually graduate, you know, so those people, what are they looking for? Are they looking for you to write long notes? We need to be thinking in terms of the end result. What are we teaching these children for? What are we grooming them for? So when they go to these companies, they won't ask them to come and uh, do bring a formula and calculate this or that. A lot of times they'll give them computers because these companies use computers to do their maths, to do their statistics, to do whatever it is they do. So at what stage exactly are we going to be training these children to use this um, softwares to actually do our computations if we don't start at an early age. So yes, yeah, so we, we as a school we need to go ahead, give a percentage or give a minimum standard for our teachers to use um, technology. Then in terms of general attitude and belief, uh, I found out that um, a lot of schools taught that ICT was for ICT. So use computers for computers, don't use computers for math, don't use computers for English, don't use, you know, but, you know, gradually we're, we're getting out of there and I'll tell you where we are, where we are at now. So, um, and again, I spoke with a school leader recently. She told me that even though the school wanted to use ICT, they send homework home to the children, the children don't do it because the parents don't support them. They don't give them internet. They don't give them access to computer. They, they, they even feel, the parents even feel clueless to be able to, um, you know, maybe they don't feel up to the tax of technology. They feel like this is alien to them. But, you know, if our school community is orientated on technology, if they are carried along, and uh, I thought about technology use, I'm sure that um, they will come on board. So we need to carry them along the, the usefulness of technology and how it helps the children and why the children need to start getting exposed and immersed in technology from a very young age so that we can change their attitude and belief. And even for the teachers, they need to challenge themselves. They need to know the, the value of technology and they need to, like I told, the other time I was to teach about chocolates, I could have just stayed in front of the class and start talking about how to produce chocolate. You put it in this machine, the machine looks like this, it looks like that, you know, but I got a simulation. Besides what I was saying, they could see, they could visualize, they could transport themselves to a chocolate factory to feel like, the, to, to feel the entire process. So that's what I'm talking about technology use. Then the kind of institution, um, when it's a public institution, they, they, don't, they can't really be bothered in Nigeria, really, because they feel like, of course, we know, you know, a lot of our leaders are not focused on education. So they, they hardly use technology and the, um, some are lucky to get donations here and there, but not a lot of them. And the private institution, of course, they have to they, are, they they have to stay in business, so they are always innovative, looking for you know next thing to wow the parents. And you know, technology is a good way to show that um, they are on top of their game. And so the the more private schools are picking up on technology well. Then um, the level of education and research. So when I was in Yaba College of Technology, because I went there before I went to the University of London, um, we, we, we didn't use computer for anything. But then when we were doing our projects, they, we, we all made the business centers very rich because we, we, we didn't have a clue how to do anything, how to format, how to use the computer. It was business center. So again, this is what Ivan was talking about when he says that the, the higher institutions are moving away from testing. The, the feeder schools in Nigeria cannot focus on technology because they are preparing the students for higher institutions that don't care about technology. 
when you're coming in, they're looking for testing. Uh, what's their highest grade? What's it? But why aren't you looking for portfolios? The higher institution should be looking for portfolios. What is it that, what projects have you done? What research have you done? What creation have you made? And this is all in tech, this is all tech base. This is all when you use technology, when you use computers for research to get things done. So um, let's go to um, curriculum and assessment. I can tell you that this is by far the biggest hindrance to technology use in Nigeria. And I believe in anywhere in the world because if the curriculum is not structured in the way that it's in technology is incorporated, then it deters the teachers and even the school from wanting to waste time on technology because at the end of the day, it, the end determines the means. So they, they're like, okay, at the end of the day, they're going to be writing oral theory tests or um, um, what's it called, worksheets. So why are we going to be teaching practicals? You know, even the ICT exams, 80% of it is, is, is writing a theory test and 20% is, is practical. So that's not good enough. So that is a deterrent from using technology because people don't want to waste time on technology. They just want to do what will show that their children are actually um, doing well. But what people need to know is that if technology is used and done well, then the children will be smarter for it. They'll be wholly developed, developed all around, not just for cramming sake. And you will still see that it, as we go. So again, teachers in Nigeria at the time, but even though we're, get, we're moving past that, they want children to reproduce their learning, but so that if a child gives a teacher verbatim what she has taught in class, she, she gets a high score. Yeah, and the teacher calls it key terminology. Yeah, I'm, I'm one for key terminologies to be in a definition, but it's key terminologies to take as much weight as the knowledge from your research. So by the time a teacher gets a definition of whatever um, topic, she should be able to look for that extra research that the child has done and it should weigh equal. So she should not say, oh, the definition I've given you is two marks and your research is one mark. No, they should weigh equal and even the research should even weigh higher because you know, going to technology, going to um, search for information, has a way of making the child part of that project so that the child does not forget what they have learned because they've been a part of it from the beginning. You didn't just wake up and, and say, oh, um, what is this? You, you put them through it and I'll show you that. So high schools are focused on tests. We've said that and once they change that, the feeder schools will also start using technology knowing that where they're graduating them to will, would determine it or will request it. So over the, since the past, um, since the last six years, technology use have increased because of the proliferation of technology. And that's because um, it, there, there's been a lot of campaigns, a lot of promotion, a lot of free training, just like this one telling us about technology use, how to use it, why to use it. And so a lot of schools have started, used, a lot more schools have started to use technology in Nigeria and um, even the coronavirus epidemic made it even um, inevitable because, I mean, you have no choice. This is our reality now. From time to time, we'll, we'll be on lockdown and would have to teach the children from the houses. So people are beginning to look for various options. One of the options that people are using is VLE. That's the virtual learning networks, this um, environment where there is learning and teachers upload their video of them teaching, they upload homework, they put children's grades on it, they send assignments and all of that. So this is what we call the level two learning, where teachers are able to structure the when and how of the structure, home, um, what's it called, work differently from school, from the school environment. So what is important about this level two stage is the when and how. What that means is that before school is just in school and during school time. But when you talk about the when, you need to be able to have structured time out of school in terms, okay, so when a child goes out of school, he, can, he needs to be able to use the VLE or whatever platform that you told him to, you've recommended the child to, to go to to learn. So you, you, you are, you are, you're not flexible with the when. 
is not just around the brick and mortar wall of the school, but outside the school that you've structured work for the child. So that's to show that you are on level two use of technology away from just presenting, using it for presentation to now using it to structure work outside of the classroom. So then the, the next important thing of this level two is the how. How are you using the technology? Are you just using, are you just learning what the teacher has sent to you? Just limited to what she knows? No, what the teacher needs to do to be able to do level two technology use very well is to link, for instance, she has a topic. She needs to be able to link it to different things that will enhance that topic. For instance, if you're teaching math, you would put your math video there, you put your assignment there, then you put other links to maybe, for instance, Khan Academy to show how, so because children learn in different ways. It's not just your way may be limiting for the child. The child has so many neurons that can pick learning from different ways in different perspectives. So if the, she, for instance, the child is getting one perspective from the teacher, by the time the child goes to Khan Academy or by the time the child goes to Oak Academy or by the time the child goes to B, B, um, BBC, you know, by the time they get exposed to the different learning which the teacher has mapped out for them because the teacher has to do the research to know the different kinds of um, applications or the different kinds of websites that will help the child enhance and enrich and improve his learning and then put all those links and share with the child so that the how of how the child is learning is enriched. So we've talked about level one and level two technology we use, which we're doing in Nigeria. We're using it at the presentation level. We're using it at, um, we're using it to teach and, and we're using it for teaching and learning enrichment. And again, we need to know that at this level two use, there must be audio visuals, there must be rich text, there must be simulation, there must be small units that give immediate feedback. So when we teach, we shouldn't just, you know, teach very long. If you go to um, websites like um, BBC or Khan Academy, you see that there's always, uh, there's always this short video, then there's immediate questions and answer, there's immediate feedback. There are times that you, you get rewards in terms of celebration for doing well. That's what learning in level two should be all about level learning in small units with immediate feedback and learning in a variety of ways and platforms. Then in level three, which is the highest level that we all should be aspiring to go to. Not a lot of people are at that level. It takes a lot of creativity to be at this level, but people are on this level, very few in Nigeria, maybe one or two, especially the big schools. So I'll discuss that level. So in this level, students drive learning and engage in different, and engage in learning in different ways. What this means is that, okay, all this while that we've been discussing technology in cooperation and um, what's it called, in learning, it's the teacher driving. But at this time, the teacher takes the backstage is at the corner and let, puts the children in front to do the research. So, for instance, she, if she will, okay, let's say that um, she's covering a topic, she will tell the children, okay, go and do research on this topic, come back on this particular day with your research and let us discuss it. Then the classroom starts to discuss the topic. And then at the end of the day, everybody comes up with maybe their own hypothesis and they look for supporting ideas to buttress it, to back it up. And then at the end of the day, they, they, they come up with a new decision, their own decision from their, their own definition, from their research, from their, their um, exposures, from all the knowledge that they've gained individually, that they've put together, that they've brainstormed, they come up with their own definition, not the, the definitions we have in books. It's people who, who did their research, got those definitions in place, but there's been new developments since then. So we need to get the children to, to start doing their own research, to be there from inception. We, we shouldn't just be looking at giving them what we think we know, but we should give them the opportunity to, to expand that learning beyond what we even know. 
by, their, by directing them to different areas that can broaden their knowledge and help them to build their own knowledge of the research. And of course, with so many, with variety of, um, you know, ideas coming from people, ideas are always more enriched than when it's just one teacher. So here we have that the teacher, um, you know, asks them to go and do a research topic, come and discuss it in class. And at the end of the day, by the time they're, they're part of this process and the teacher says, go and form your notes, because they've discussed it extensively, it's easier to discuss your notes. So as I said in the beginning, when teachers say, go and do your notes, when she just presents it, the children will copy because they don't know. They, they were not there from the beginning. They don't know the process. It's just like giving a child the plant and say, write about how this plant is uh, germinates, how it was how the seed was, um, um, was sown and how it germinated. The child doesn't know, but if you um, carry the child along from the beginning, put the seed together in the soil and watch it grow together, water it together, then it's easier for, for the child to write about how the plant grows than when you just throw him in the middle of it. So that's what this level is about, helping the child to um, be part of the, um, graphical representation of whatever it is that you want him to define, helping him to be part of the beginning, the, the, the inception of what you're talking about. So even when you're talking about formulas, how was the formula derived? That's where you should be starting from. Not take this formula, solve this. No, it's about how did they put this formula together in the first place? So research topics and then forming notes and then discussing challenge idea, challenging ideas and coming up with an original version of what it should be based on the developments that have come since we've had our test book a long time ago. So now, again, schools should have, like I said before, schools should have a standard or percentage for computer use so that there's always an opportunity to use applications like Excel for math and other applications that um, people get to use for language and so on. So using themes, the, you, a lot of schools that are on this level three have also advanced to the stage where they now use themes in their curriculum. So what this, what this means is, for instance, you have a theme, holiday. For instance, your, your theme for this term is holiday. What you want to do is, Divide the children into groups. Before you even decide, divide them into groups, tell all of them, our team is holiday for this thing. So I need you people to go and research about holidays. Imagine we are a holiday company. What are, what are we supposed to look like? And then come up with banners, come up with design of what this classroom should look like if we were a holiday company. And then the children will go do their research and then in, within a week decorate the class, make the class look like it's a holiday office. And then the teacher comes back to say, okay, now we've learned some things about holiday and what a holiday company looks like. Now let's proceed from there. What would the holiday company do? They would produce bro brochures, right? They'll produce brochures for, for um, the different destination centers that people want to go. They would describe the centers. They would, um, they would put all the qualities and characteristics of the center. They'll make their brochure attractive so that people want to go to those places. And then they'll put a price to the different locations, to the logistics that will take you to different locations. And then they will put, um, and then let's imagine that we're that holiday company and we have different parts of the organization. So there is the production part, there is the promotion part, there is the accounting part, and the logistics part. And so everybody is in, she puts everybody in these different groups and said, okay, production, what you will do is you will design this brochure, make sure that it's beautiful and attractive enough. And then as she's saying that, she's trying to bring out art, the, all the elements they've learned in art. Okay, make sure that those lines, thick lines and wavy lines we've talked about in art, everything is represented there. And then she goes to promotion and say, okay, promotion, you're the one interfacing with the market and production. So go and discuss with people. Go and get to hear what they really want to, to know about this, about the various locations, what they want to do on their holiday, what will attract them about the holiday. Then promotion people will go back to marketing people to be able to say, oh, this is what 
the market needs. And again, they would be able, the teacher would tell the promotion people, okay, write an essay about how you're going to convince the, um, the um, marketing, the, the people, the end users about these uh, holiday packages. And so she would say, if for instance, she's doing, she has taught adjectives or maybe parts of speech in English, she will say, okay, all those parts of speech that we've, we've taught in English, let it be in your brochure, let it be in your write-up and advise production to put it in their brochure to, to about what this holiday will actually be like. And then she goes to accounting and say, okay, accounting department, this is what you need to do. You need to come up with a budget for this entire holiday thing. Find out if production is spending within budget, tell production what budget you have, tell marketing, that's promotion, what budget you have, do the math, make sure that they are not going beyond the budget for each capacity. And then if, for instance, she has taught interest in the class, she will say, okay, also incorporate that we are giving loans for this holiday package. And those that take loan, what interest would they pay at the end of five years? What interest would they pay every month if they are taking this loan for four years? You understand? So the teacher is the person who stands behind guiding the children to do this massive research with technology, bringing, finding out, she also directs them to, to different websites, for instance, Canva, where they can get ideas of designs. She directs them to the websites of, for instance, um, what's it called, language, adjectives, things that she has taught, where they can get narratives to describe holiday. You understand? By the time the children, and then again, she goes to logistics. Okay, logistics, you are the one deciding how these people move from one place to another to ensure that what we have is shown on the other side of the um, country. By the time all this is put well put together, the children have been exposed. They've been part of the process of a holiday. And as they, are, they were doing that, they were learning their math, they were learning their English, they were le learning their geography. If she had taught them geography and maybe topology, then she would tell them, okay, I want to see the aspects of topology that I've sent to you described in your brochure. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's what it means to use technology in the third level, challenging the children, guiding them and ensuring that um, they are exposed to different websites and different applications to, to be able to produce a, a project that is meaningful. So lastly, um, well, not lastly, um, almost to the last, um, what I need to let you know about technology use, especially on the third level, is that it helps learners to construct their meaning because they, they've been part of the process and they retain the information or like the one that the teacher stands in front of the classroom teaching from morning to night, they will cram it, write it for exam and forget it afterwards. But the one that's the, the, the weakness, they the were part of, they the, um, the were immersed in, stays with them for life. Wake them up 20 years later, they're, they're able to tell you everything about the holiday. Take them to the office, they're able to extend their knowledge from there to other um, scenarios. Now, lessons are interesting, engaging, and motivating, and learners are challenged. So again, I mean, who would go through this kind of experiential learning and not be challenged or not be engaged? Because, I mean, you have your own part to play. You, 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 you go and research um, how to do a flyer, a brochure on holiday, and then you're interacting with another group of people, which is the promotion department about what do they think? Uh, is the design good enough for what the audience wants? And then back and forth, of course, that's interesting and engaging. Then learners can achieve mastery with flexible when and dynamic how. So you can see that you know, uh, when and a how of technology, which is so important, is coming to play. So it's not just limited to what I'm teaching them in the classroom, it's also extended to what they're doing outside the classroom and bringing back to the classroom and taking out again and bringing back to develop one and then the dynamic how because it's not again just one way of how i'm teaching but how we are all bringing ideas and learning from different areas to actually um, put this thing in place learners learn more when they interact and brainstorm there's so much interaction and brainstorming when you use technology in teaching 
Meaningful learning develops through authentic stats. Activities are chosen to stimulate those encountered in real life. As you can see, the, the teaching with technology encompasses this. So um, yeah, finally, um, no, I think I missed it. Okay, finally, I'd just like to advise schools and teachers that number one, schools should try to equip and motivate staff with computers, teach and uh, encourage them so that they go all out to learn these things. Teachers should pull their weight, they should be invested in technology. The more the research, the more they know the technology that will enhance a particular teaching. Technology is not just for the sake of technology, it's for what can bring out the most about what you want to portray. The first thing I ask my teachers is, what's the objective? When you know the objective of what you're teaching, then you know what you want to bring out of that teaching, and then you know the kind of technology that can help you to, to show it, to, 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 make, to, visualize, to help the child to visualize it. So that's what technology is for, not just any technology, technology that brings out the best in your teaching. Then schools should have a place in, schools should have in place a comprehensive e-safety policy that should be designed that should be signed by teachers and parents. So again, because we are exposing learners to all these kinds of uh, technology, we must have a comprehensive e-safety policy. It's very important because the, the website is not safe. There's a lot of exposure. And I know that Ivan talked about this. So there's a lot of exposure. We, we, we must know that this policy must be in place to keep the children safe. If the teachers should read it. They should know how to keep children safe. Parents should read it. They should know how to expose children and keep them safe online. And that includes you know, telling children not to post their pictures online. Schools should not post children's names online. It's, it's very wrong. They, they, they can be targeted. The schools should, um, you know, should, schools should keep updating their software so that it's not easy to you know, break into it. And um, what else? You know, there's so many things that can be in your e-safety policy but that has to be in place so that it's not possible for children to be vulnerable online and um, you know, be the subject for um, attackers. Then um, teachers should guide students to drive their learning through directing learning, not dominating learning. We've talked about this. It's not about the teacher. It's not about the teacher being on at all. Should guide them. Which website should they go? What, what learning does she want, what questions does she want to ask from what they are, they, they, they are doing to help them think critically, but not her as an embodiment, he or her as an embodiment of knowledge. The school should seek out companies to sponsor their technology plans. I know that a lot of people don't have um, enough technology. There's short of, they're short of, um, what's it called, resources, you know? But if you write to companies, I know some companies that, change their computers every four years. If you write to companies every year, by the time they want to change their computers in four years, they'll send it to you. So it's not about how far we've gone, it's, it's about the fact that we're being progressive about it. So whether schools are in level one, level two, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we're all striving to get to where we need to go. It's, it's not okay to be stagnant. It's okay to be at any level right now, but it's not okay to be stagnant. We must always be surging forward to seeing how we can be best at what we do. And with companies helping us, being persistent, being observant about who can tap into your technology plans is very important. Schools should develop ICT curriculum to meet the needs of teachers and students with cross-curricular outcomes. So, this, I believe, is very explanatory, just like I described with the holiday program. Let whatever ICT that you're doing not be just about come and touch the mouse, come and move the, this one. It should be about, okay, what maths can we, what maths lessons can we get from this particular topic? What geography lessons can we incorporate in this topic? What ICT can we learn from it? What language can we learn from it? So, that's it. I believe my time is off. I, I was trying to hurry up. <laughs> your time is off, Ma. Thank you so much. But you're so filled with knowledge. I, for one, I'm 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 an, an advocate for project-based learning. A lot of there's a lot of um, 
reading and looking at books, which for me, I don't believe that's the way out for us here now in this country. But like one of our speakers said, this is um, Charity, she mentioned that we still need development here in this country when it comes to technology and um, in the schools, in our schools. Uh, who, ha, ha, the teachers, do they even know what Microsoft Word is? Can they even click on their system? So can we really blame them? There's not enough development when it comes to technology. We have it written on paper, but we don't, we don't carry it out. So I don't know. I know we'll get there with people like you and every other person talking about this issue, we'll all join hands in getting to where we need to take the Nigerian school system to when it comes to technology, because we are trying to raise kids who are future ready, because you no, know, you kids outside today, what they do with technology, having another digital divide where some kids can't even access technology, let alone be able to use it, is a huge, huge, huge problem for us. So we need more of you, and you guys need to go out there and do this hands-on thing to get schools who don't have access to technology or can use technology very well to the level where they can. So thank you very much, Matt. We appreciate this. Thank you so much. I don't know, yeah, but, questions, is there any questions? But what I want to say is that it's so easy. It's just having, yeah. you know, having the interest. That yes, Thank you. Okay, there's a question. Okay, let's go. Yes, there's a question. Yeah, um, I'm Sunny Mohammed, held away from Kwara State. I firstly want to make a contribution to what uh, the speaker has just uh, talked about. She, the topic is really interesting, and um, I must commend her for really her doing a great job. Uh, she has really schooled me on this topic. However, I want to say that uh, we have not, uh, from the discussion, from the likely the lecture we just had, We've not really done, said, she has not really said much about uh, the role of the parents as far as this uh, technology is concerned. You know, many of our students, uh, they say we just, we learn most of these things, not just the teachers have a role to play, the parents have a role to play, and the students themselves also have a role to play. And, you know, most of these children, they are, they, they, they are usually with their parents aside, going, aside being in school. I think we need to dwell more on it as far as this is concerned because it's very, very important. Now, back to what I want to ask. My question is this. We are talking about technology, uh, making use of technology as a method of teaching in Nigeria. Of course, it's something that uh, will help us get to the next level. But looking at our, our, our level of education in Nigeria, how many uh, teachers really know how to operate these computers? How many teachers have a palm top of their own? That the, you can see you, most of them do not even have the basic skills required. And if you don't have the basic skills, how do you impact knowledge on your students? Develop the image of themselves. Of course, uh, in most of these schools do not encourage the teachers. Okay. And Hello. So I. Hello. 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 Okay. Um, Ma, you need to take that very, very quickly, the answer, so that we can go to the next speaker. Okay. I believe the question he's asking is how do we educate teachers to learn. Yes so that they can teach the children is that it yes yes okay yes i actually want to say that um technology use is not a big deal it's, it's of interest if the school can take interest in it and school their teachers then it will be very easy for them to it's it's very basic you know even we've been i've organized a few courses and um, a, a few training in the past so teachers also need to motivate themselves. They also need to take interest in this thing. It's, it's very easy. There are very many trainings going on. There are trainings that, okay, that, um, you know, that can help them understand the basic things of how to use technology, how to access the internet. For a long time, I thought I knew how to use Excel well. But until recently, I realized that Excel had almost 500 functions. And it's not like these things are difficult. It's just for you to learn them. 
Yeah. You understand? There's even a lot of learning on Coursera, a lot of learning on, um, you know, there are a lot of learning platform, you them me. Once yeah. when you go on them, you can, you can teach yourself. A lot, I think, I feel like a lot of teachers too are laid back. They are just waiting for training to come to them. But when they look for training, they will find, and then they can recommend to their schools and say, I found this training is X amount. If, you, if I bring part of it, can you support me with the other part? You know, I'm we're not in a country, we're not in a country where we can afford to be waiting. Okay, so the more we wait, the more nothing gets done. We need to actually be protecting ourselves and, and learning this thing. Learning is so easy and as also easy just for you to take this thing and look for it. And as regards the parents, once we're on the right track of learning ourselves, we can always extend it to the parents so that they can learn to and support them. I believe I have answered that question. Yes, you, you have, but uh, to a greater extent, you have. You talk about a school uh, are getting opportunities. If you are not, if you are not speaking, can you mute your mic, please? There is so much noise on the background. So we need, uh, can you recommend some of those uh, companies? Because you talk about companies giving out computers to schools. Probably maybe some of these schools around could benefit. Maybe one, somebody like myself could talk to some schools to write. So can you just recommend some so that I put them down? No, what I'm saying is that I know a lot of companies that change their computers every four years. You understand? It's okay. not like they're giving it to schools. I'm just saying if you are persuasive enough, if you are persistent enough, you keep writing to companies, then by the time they are ready to change their computers, they will think of yeah. you first. So it's not about, you know, I can give you a hundred names of companies, but the companies are all out there in Nigeria. Even any company you have to. You to, yeah, even any company you go to will be disposed to you if your, your, your case is convincing and persistent enough. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, for the wonderful thank presentation. Thank you, for, thank you for quizzing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so thank you everybody. If there's no other question, then I believe we should let the next speaker come on. <laughs>